If you're the type that feels a little queasy when your GPS looks like this, you might want to think twice about venturing out on the legendary Golden Road, 96 miles of stony dirt cutting straight through Maine's northern forest. The Golden Road was built to be the main pipeline for getting wood to the mills when the river drives ended in the mid-70s. No gas, no cell service, no food or water. You need to be prepared to solve your own problems and, uh, and, and deal with uh, your trip as it comes. The first 30 miles or so of the Golden Road out of Millinocket follow the west branch of the Penobscot River, renowned for its world-class salmon fishing. I come up here a lot. I cannot help myself. I have to stop here and fish for a little while. Charlie Krause of Thorndike, Maine, comes out on the Golden Road every couple of weeks to fish for landlocked salmon under the watchful gaze of Mount Katahdin. Well, what do you know? And he's gone, and that's the way we like it. I don't keep any fish, so if they get off, I'm pleased as punch. These woods are so special, we need to protect them. Portions of the North Woods are protected, most notably Baxter State Park, gifted to the public in an extraordinary act of generosity by former Governor Percival Baxter in 1930 a huge block of pristine wilderness just north of the Golden Road, forever wild and open to the public, with one tiny exception at the base of Mount Katahdin. We've been here since about 1910. Clark Island on Lower Togue Pond may lie within park borders, but it is privately owned by descendants of Thomas Welcome Clark. Baxter State Park expanded to include the land around Upper and Lower Togue Ponds in the 1990s, but the Clark family remains firmly anchored in the middle of Lower Togue Pond. It's really indescribable to say how lucky we are. You know, we sit inside in State Park, yet we own the land. It's, it's really it, priceless. Our guide this morning, Tom Schaefer of Maine Heritage Timber and a great-grandson of the family patriarch. Schaefer's home may be in Millinocket, but he motors out to this off-grid family compound every chance he gets, four seasons a year. My grandparents had their honeymoon here. My parents had their honeymoon here, okay? For all I know is I was conceived here. It's four generations of serious, serious legacy here. And the, here's the odd thing, we all still get along. There are six camps, or cabins, several dating back a hundred years or more. As the only local year-round family member, Schaefer finds himself the unofficial caretaker. He is more than happy to oblige, given all the island has done for him. It's changed my life for the better. I mean, I can't even tell you how it's changed my life. Schaefer was living in Connecticut, flying high as a Wall Street trader when the crash of 2008 left him out of a job. He retreated to the family island to lick his wounds and decided to change everything. He was never going back. When I worked on Wall Street, I was a spoiled brat. I described myself as a guy, you'd call the guy to do everything. Um, in Maine, we don't call the guy, we do it ourselves. And do it, he's done, creating his heritage timber company, launching Timber Chic, and settling into the rhythms of a more grounded, elemental way of living, finally seeing the forest for the trees. Listen to the wind. And the rain's even better. You know, what more could you ever want? You know, I don't need to go to the Bahamas. No thanks. You know, this is where I want to be. You've topped the top of the hill there. We're just pulled over a little bit there. We'll let you go by. The Golden Road may have been built for the paper companies, but it's also been a godsend for adventurers. The Golden Road is really what made that wilderness accessible to the world. Matt Polstein was among the first to see the recreational potential of the new logging road. Just a few years after the river drives ended, Polstein began sending rafts down through the rapids on the West Branch. Forty years later, Polstein's New England Outdoor Center has expanded into a full-service, year-round wilderness resort. It started out as purely a whitewater rafting company and have really grown more into a lodging and hospitality business. 
Sitting on the shores of Millinocket Lake with a front row view of Katahdin, the New England Outdoor Center reflects Polstein's belief that one needn't sacrifice comfort and service to have an authentic wilderness experience. We are incredibly fortunate to have the opportunity to make this available to people. So pretty and expansion continues at the New England Outdoor Center. A uh, new micro brewing coming online later this year and a hilltop wedding venue that of course will overlook Mount Katahdin. And back at Clark Island, there are about 90 descendants of uh, Thomas Clark. So the families work out sort of a complicated visitation schedule for people who want to come up. Not everybody's cup of tea because there's no cell service. It's very remote. And uh, hey, look, as Tom Schaefer said, all the family still gets along, so they're doing something right. They're doing something right. All right, coming up, memories of log driving.